right, good Monday morning. How is everybody doing today? We are live once again Monday morning. Um, we're going to tie a couple of flies, maybe. We're going to have a cup of coffee. I know I got the coffee. So yeah, we're going to start uh, started this last week. Uh, we're going to do this, um, I don't know, moving forward Monday mornings. Same time, same place. Uh, this is going to be a little bit relaxed, a little bit informal, um, but what it is going to be, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be real. So, uh, if you haven't caught it so far, uh, we're, are <clears throat> working our way through, uh, this hairline dubbin, where's my box? This hairline dubbin, I'll put it up there real quick. This, uh, fly tying kit, right? Top 20 patterns for the beginners. Um, what transpired with this is I, through this, uh, coronavirus shutdown, I wanted to get some materials out to my participants of my Project Healing Waters program and, um, you know, trying to come up with kits and build kits and put kits together is actually a lot of work. Um, you really have to have the setup and stuff to uh, do something like that um, so I went out and um, we got our uh, seven kits and we are in the middle well maybe five flies six flies into it uh, we're working on a, a video series of fly tying uh, for that kit uh, those top 20 patterns so the participants will each have a uh, video reference in addition to the book in addition to just being able to call and ask me a question if they have a question um, and it's pretty interesting because it's like you know i i'm following the book as close as i can um, at least on the first time i'm tying it twice and the second time when i tie it i add a little bit of my twist on it um, something in addition to what the book might say um, that I've picked up over the years so yeah it's a great little uh, fun little project uh, even if even if you're in a, an experienced established fly tire I would recommend just going out and getting this little kit it's fun uh, it's a fun little project um, and you don't end up with uh, tons and tons and tons of hooks because the more hooks they throw in the kit, the, the price is going to exponentially grow. Um, but the materials, I'm going to end up with lots of scraps, uh, not scraps, but um, more than, you, got, you end up with more material than hooks. So anyways, it's, it's a lot of fun. So, let's see here. Nobody's popped in yet, but that's all right. It's Monday morning. It's early. Uh, it's 9 o'clock Central. We have a beautiful sunny day. Um, it's kind of windy. I was thinking about going fishing. Um, it might be a later in the day kind of thing. Uh, I do have some errands I got to run and whatnot. So, yeah, I had a great weekend. Um, it was kind of a blur, quick, fast, and in a hurry. I did get out, and I caught my first, caught my first smallmouth bass for the for the season since our last Monday night check-in coffee chat. Um, and shortly thereafter of catching said smallmouth, I was able to creep on over and catch myself a little little tiny little northern pike i was working my way back to the bank uh, to get out to head back home to make some lunch and i stopped and i'm fishing because I, I like to fish 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 all the way to the end and uh yeah i'm, I'm kind of a little bit towards well i'm almost to get out of the water and i just kind of i felt something tug my fly and just kind of went back and hung out for a couple more minutes and yep little tiny little pike so 
Anyways, um, we're going to tie a fly. We're not going to just sit here and jibber-jabber looking at me, because I can look at me all day long. Um, but I'm here to have some fun, tie a couple of flies here Monday morning. Um, and then later today, we're going get, to get busy uh, with the remainder of this uh, top 20 pattern kit for beginners. Uh, we ended with the woolly worm. Up next on deck with that will be the woolly bugger, which is interesting because I was taught a slightly different method and I teach a slightly different uh, method. As far as the woolly bugger. Hey, we got Brian in the house. Good morning, sir. Not sure which he loves more, pike or smallmouth. Well, as far as the fight, yes, they are both, I believe, pretty darn close on equal footing. I think the bass the smallmouth will have in my opinion at least with the northerns that i catch and the bass that i catch i think the smallmouth has a slight edge as far as uh fun to play on uh, in the water um i sometimes pike can be a little bit annoying because i'm targeting smallmouth and you get that northern on and one click you lost your fly um, but yeah I, I they're both both fun I I love them both I'm, I'm I feel actually I feel fortunate and blessed uh, to be right here in central Minnesota being able to target smallmouth and and pike uh, on the regular and that's and I'm like super happy and super excited about that. I almost feel bad for the people that only fish for trout. For me, trout's something. It's a little bit. It's like going out to eat at the exotic food restaurant, whatever that might be for you, right? Me, bass, smallmouth. That's my pizzas. That's my cheeseburgers. That those are my staples, right? And for me, going out and catching trout on the fly and fly fishing in streams and small, you know, trout rivers, it's almost like uh, something exotic. I don't know. But anyways, we're going to tie a fly. Um, I, I think it was Jacob that suggested this last week for this week. Um, and full disclosure... This is kind of this is kind of one of my weak links, and we're gonna be spinning some deer hair. Yeah, boy. Kind of intimidated, but we're gonna try our best. If nothing else, we're gonna have fun. And fortunately for me, I do have the right tools, and in my opinion, the right tools for the right job. So I don't know. Let's slide on over to the bench. And see. I guess that doesn't make sense to have that. I gotta go all the way over. I'm still learning my software here, so we'll get through it. All right. So in my vice myself this is the Daiichi it's a 2720 it's a one knot wide gap stinger hook and it says right here look at you don't get this with all hooks it says uses deer hair bass bugs divers frogs and mice and guess what we're gonna tie the deer hair um, I have uh, this one kind of off to the side as, um, I don't know if you want to call it inspiration or reference. I did not tie this. This was not tied by yours truly. I believe I bought this on a 
auction, or I don't even remember where I picked this up, but um, it's pretty interesting. Down there we have some red wire just kind of working down there. So, you know, I'm not going to spend too much time on the tail. I'm not going to spend too much effort, but I'm going to to do the best I can because for me I'm not trying to right here right now today come up with the best uh, final product I'm just here having a cup of coffee with my friends and I am learning I am still learning when it comes to uh, spinning deer hair and compacting it and things like that there so if nothing else we're gonna just give it our best shot. I'm trying to trying to look at this and diagnose or not dissect, but it appears that there's some goop. Actually, sounds like some head cement. And I'm holding this piece of tail kind of up and back. interesting you know and that's the thing is sometimes you have to buy a fly off of somebody or whatever to take home and dissect and I'm not gonna cut this up I, I, I know the gist on spinning deer hair and I'm not that good at it and you know why because I haven't practiced it that much and here we go we're gonna go live all right so again I got that one on um, wide gap specialty hook and for thread uh, I'm gonna use a hundred denier uh, gel spun and we're gonna just start our thread back here I guess you know what we could do. Look for thread here. And just to kind of, I like that little bit of red. I like adding red to flies. So I'm just going to take my red marker, make this white gel spun into a red gel spun. We're going to see what happens. We're going to work this down the bend. As well. Okay, I'm gonna pause there and I'm gonna add a little bit more red. That way I got enough to work my way back up. Alright. And I'm just gonna take a little dab of solar as uh, bone dry over that red. Because why not? So Brian, let me ask you, how did you uh, how did you find out about the live stream? Did you know I was uh, doing this, or did you just get a pop-up notification out of curiosity? I'm trying to figure out how the system works uh, from the user user end, because believe it or not, I really don't know of any other fly tires that on YouTube at least, do anything similar to this, where we just do live streams in this fashion. I, I've seen the podcast chit-chat talks, but nobody's tying flies live like this. All right, we wanted to add a little dab of bone dry. So we're going to not get that, not get that. We'll put you away. I'm trying to work on being a little bit more organized on my bench a little bit better workflow if you will awesome so 
yeah, this is a gel sponge. And we're just going to add a little bit of bone dry. And that's going to help make that pop. I like that. I'm going to give that a quick zap. Like I said, I don't want to spend too much time working on the, the back end and the tail on this. This is this is more about the spinning of the deer here and practicing of that and compacting. And All right. Oh, that looks pretty slick. All right, so just kind of looking at that as my reference. I'm just gonna grab myself some brown, brown bucktail. I got some belly hair, what we're gonna use for the actual shabam, but let's grab some of this brown for our tail. Nice good size clump. And I'm definitely going to want to, uh, A, when you, before you start spinning deer hair and tying big old fun flies like this, expect your fly bench to just get absolutely trashed. We're going to go through a lot of deer hair and we're going to make a mess. Another thing I find really handy, especially when it comes to cleaning, put a boom, 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 boom. Well, it's interesting because, like, the as far as, like, the live streaming, I've been live streaming for years, tying flies, here on YouTube. I used to do it every Sunday morning, or Sunday or Saturday night, Sunday, I don't know when I did it. It just goes to show my... I'm going to stack this, just because. Get this a little... length and a little bit more for our tail. Go all the way around that. Oh, look at that flare. All right. I just looked the other day. Um, Total YouTube video count for my channel is 310 videos. So I'm having a lot of fun with it. What can I say? All right. Uh, let's add some flash. sitting out from the other day so I shouldn't have to go too deep but I'm not finding it let's go this will be fine again you know I'm not for me right here right now it's not about the back half of the fly just trying to have fun practicing let's try that Some gold, little goldish colored northern lights. Crinkle. Let's get that out of the way. And let's do a little bit more, a little bit more bucktail. 
nice long piece. Tell you what, one of the things that I've really discovered, at least being a YouTube creator, is it's actually a lot easier and a lot less effort for me to just do these videos as a live stream, opposed to the video editing and post production and all that extra hoopla. I think that'll work. And you know what? Looking at that, uh, kind of my sample fly, exhibit A, we're going to call it. That's why they got the goop on there to kind of keep that tail from flaring out too big. I might add that at the very end. Where do I add a little bit? You know what? I'm going to add a little bit of solar as flex in this right here, right now, real quick. Everything's going to go in. Give this a little squirt. Actually, let me do a quick half hitch. Just so we don't lose our spot. Right. Throw a half itch in there if you just want to. It's kind of like hitting the pause button. Let me just get our thread out of the way. We're going to come back with that, but we want to get in here and add a little dab of. So if I do that, we give ourselves just a perfect amount of flare. Controlled flare. I like that. Like some Ric Flair. I don't know. Yeah, Monday morning. Here we go. Shake and bake, baby. Shake and bake. All right. So let's 
let's get to it. Back that up. Back up that train. And I have, this is, um, it's been around a while. This is uh, some deer belly hair dyed over white. Rusty orange. Look at that. That's just, where, did, where did that sticker come from? Where? Oh, line iced up rusty orange. So confused. But anyways, this is what we got. Belly hair. Get in my belly. And we're gonna just kind of work our way through this, chomping away. scissors off to the side and I'm gonna use these ones. I'm switching scissors. We're we're going to the going to the razors. The doctor slicks the razor blade. And in fact what I'm gonna do before I go too too far into this, see look at my what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this razor blade and I'm just gonna actually work my way down down a little bit deeper so I can actually see so this was all this was all missed deer here why we try to cut as close to the hides as possible. And this was stuff that was actually missed. So now as we go to, if I had just, I don't know, if I had just gone to cut, cutting into this, I would have cut at this length, not that length, and I would have been short. I would have been missing quite a bit of this deer hair, so I'm glad I just took the second to see how close to the hide I could actually get this. Extreme caution when you're working with uh, these razor blades. Because guess what? They are sharp as... Alright, now we're getting there. Sometimes preparation, a little bit of prep work will save you a lot of post-production work, right? I know everybody's sitting there thinking, when are we gonna, when are we gonna see him tie? Well, we'll get there. All right, I think I got that cleaned up Steve Trybowski in the house. Good mornings. All right. I'll take a sip of coffee here. That's what we're working on here now. All right. So we got our tail on. We just took a couple seconds cleaning up our deer hair, our deer belly hair. Kind of working prior, this was where it got cut, and it should have been cut just a little bit closer. But now we can see how close we can go. So one of the things I'm also working on here for uh, the 
Fly Tying um, YouTube channel is I want to get some actual quality. I'm looking for some good background music. And I know there's tons of suggestions out there. Anybody can suggest their favorite band, but one of the things we have to work around is this thing called copyright laws. And so far, I have not had a single strike against me on YouTube for copyright violation as far as music. All right, we cut off a piece of deer hair. And like always, out. Get right up in there. And this is going to be our first piece. And guess what? We're not going to stack that. Or should we stack that? Should we stack or not stack? I'm not going to stack it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get this right in here. Two wraps, and I'm gonna let this. This isn't gonna be a spin. It's just gonna flare. Well, good. If you like the soft piano, then we'll keep the soft piano. Uh, but I think after a while, I'm gonna have to switch it out to a different, different soft piano. I'm trying to find something that, you know, can be nice and mellow in the background. Um, I, I don't know. I, ju I, I just need to have something in the background. I can't just have the stone cold silence. Uh, let's see. Steve has asked, what type of bass fly am I crafting? Well, this is kind of my inspiration. And I know it's not going to be anywhere close to this, uh, but we are just spinning deer here. And that's what it's about today. Uh, spinning. Practicing. And having a cup of coffee or two with you, my friends. Mm, that is good. Alright, let's see here. We did that a couple of spins. through that and look at this I got myself one of those fugly fugly packers right this thing is huge this is in comparison to these little brass ones now these little brass ones are great they work but yeah, how's it going I don't know. And then another fun little handy thing when it comes to uh, this is our little pen pen bit. Because look at that. All right. Just to get it up there. Pack that in there. All right. All right, here we go. Ground control to Major Tom. Let's practice our deer hair spinning. Let's see what we come up with. I need to just move everything else out of the little pockets underneath my vise. Move the whip finish. I just want a nice, clean, clear working area down below. All right. Let's do it. Let's grab another little chunk of deer here. And I'm grabbing that proverbial kind of pencil's width diameter right off the hide. And this part of the operation isn't making the footage because I'm, it's kind of hard to just, I don't know, I wish I had a cameraman. I wish I had a... Uh, cameraman, a little Lego 
Lego-sized cameraman. Brian says, I highly recommend drilling a hole in a dowel rod for compressing the deer hair. It applies a more even amount of pressure and can be used as half hitches. I have a something like this too. But right now actually I don't know. So we have we have options. We have options. I guess one of the things is maybe if I wish that the hole was just a little bit smaller because at a certain point I don't know. Alright, name of the game is clean the deer here. That's that's key. And for this I don't have to stack. But for whatever reason, to make it easier on ourselves, we are gonna trim off the tips. So let's see what gets a uh, little pack here. That's it. I'm going to grab another wash, rinse, and repeat. the hardest part about this whole operation is just trimming off the deer hair into nice even clumps. Clean, clean, clean. So what's everybody's, uh, I don't know, stay-at-home status? What's your state up to? Minnesota, as of today, we've lifted quite a bit of restrictions. There's going to be a lot of businesses opening, etc., etc. Too loose and the spin. And once it stops spinning stop spinning because we've, we've already spun all you can spin if that makes sense once it stops spinning it's not going to spin anymore there was a uh, bars and restaurants are still closed I mean you can still do takeout But uh, not for dine-in service. And there was, uh, I don't know, it'll, it'll probably make the national news. Uh, maybe, maybe not. But it's been all over our local news. A bar owner uh, did a GoFundMe. It was almost a $200,000 to fight the, fight the man about not being able to be open which is interesting because of that two hundred thousand dollars that's been raised would absolutely would have saved my VFW you know maybe we should do a GoFundMe usually when I see these GoFundMe pays I just want to give them the finger and say ah go fund yourself My wife is working from home, which is good. I, I really like having her here. All right, right on top, let's do our one, two, and the 
spell. Missing anything. So this is spinning of the deer hair, which is different than stacking and packing. Which I don't think I'm I'm packing it in tight enough. I just I mean I feel like I want to pack it tighter, but then I feel like I'm just gonna push it through the vise. Do we need to go more deer hair? In our our clumps. We shall see. Well, I'm all for 100% everybody being open. Obviously, we want everybody to be open. But, you know, when I see a bar owner just up and out of nowhere, be like, we're opening. They didn't say what precautions, what's, what safety measures are being taken in place. Because to me, that's, that's, that's what it's all about right here, right now, is, yeah, be open. What are you doing? What safety measures are you taking in place? Or are you just blindly saying this is all a hoax and dead bodies don't count? I don't know. All I know is I can control my only actions I can control are my own right it's funny to get to get through this I have to use a lot of therapy talk to myself Oh yeah, you have to put firm pressure on the back. So we're thinking we might just have too big of a hole there. Which I suppose is why this little guy is so great. I will say over the years, one of the things I have learned is the gel spun, at least for me, allows me to get the most amount of attention. But I tell you what, man, with this, uh, <laughs> this rust colored deer hair, I'm making a mess. So yeah, at some point later today, we're going to continue on with our, our hairline dubbing fly tying kit top 20 patterns. Next up on deck will be the Wooly Bugger. Super excited for that one because that is, hands down, my favorite fly to tie. From 
why is it my favorite? Because that's what we used to teach every week. For our beginner fly tires. Because when you only got one shot at it, and you want somebody to get addicted to <laughs> fly tying, uh, I think something a little bit more than a San Juan worm is going to be necessary. And around here, the woolly bugger is just the perfect pattern. Not the end of the world. I'm not expecting this to come out looking like my exhibit A fly. I'm just looking to have fun and a cup of coffee, which we might have to go make another cup here soon. Steve Trybowski, he is banned from spinning deer hair in the house. Oh man! So yeah, um, the woolly bugger man. I I went out the other day for my first time, and I'm talking about my small mouth, and I'm talking about my pike, and I caught it on a black and yellow woolly bugger, black tail, black chenille and a bright yellow hackle. You know, I had a couple of people tell me, hey, you need to get out there and use um, acrylix, a gold acrylix was my first clue. My second clue was uh, a chartreuse. No, wait, was it original? No, it was a chartreuse uh, fly of the day. So, I kind of, in between the two of those, I, 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 I just put them together and um, in my mind's eye, I made, or I chose the uh, black and yellow woolly bugger. Getting close to the front end. And what's nice about this big old packer is it keeps your fingers so far away from that tip of that hook. I think it's going to be a few more rounds of. Uh, more rounds of uh, black, or not black, uh, this rusty brown. I said black because I was looking for that black and yellow woolly bugger, but I thought I might have had a spare one sitting off to the side here in my woolly bugger bin, but I did not. didn't think to do is legs. Well, one of the things that I get to experiment for the very first time is I bought myself one of these Stefano uh, deer hair 
razor blade trimmer things. And it's done spinning, it's done spinning. I'm also always afraid I'm just gonna bend this hook. Yeah, we got the ended up, we got the fugly packer, and then we got the deer hair or the cutter. This beautiful little stick on there, which we're gonna get to that here in a little bit. We might have to take a quick pause to uh, refill the coffee. And then we'll also, um, oh, what do I want to do? Refill the coffee. And then after that, we'll probably finish this fly. Not going to be a two fly kind of day. <laughs> not, a, not this morning. But, uh, you know, we're having fun. Worth the money for the razor blade holder. Well, we're going to find out. I guess if you don't slice your finger open, uh, then you've, <laughs> then you're, doing, then you're, then you, it's definitely worth the money. So let me see here. I want to look at this for a reference. Okay, we've got that. And I actually have quite a bit up front. of brown and then we'll switch over and we're going to do some I don't know you'll have to help me decide uh, in addition to that rust brown we can do I have some red I was also thinking maybe uh, a yellow or a hot pink front end so red yellow or hot pink that's going to be our options help me decide folks So I guess what's, I'm going to ask also what's the, uh, what's, not what's best, but what's easier or comes out better, uh, bigger clumps and doing it in less iterations or slightly smaller clumps that are a little bit more manageable, but you end up having to spin and pack more. And this is just when it's we're spinning. Uh, uh, it's a little bit different when we're just st stacking and packing. We'll switch over to the red, or not the red. Smaller hair clumps, you know, 
look at much denser head. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Pink, pink, pink. Hot pink it is. I wish I had like three more hands. Because then I could just. <laughs> I don't know. Fly time would be a lot easier if you had four hands. I often think about what um, an automated fly tying system would look like and what it would need um, and entail. You know, I watch you CNC machinists and controlled automated 3D printers and junk like that. Yeah, I mean, just like factory production of, you know, fly time is, it's interesting. And they say, you know, hand-tied flies, oh, look at that bend. It would be almost next to impossible to automate fly tying. So many different nuances and tensions. And I'll tell you what, after dealing with the deer hair. Fingers are sore just from constantly like pulling and clumping and holding on to things tight. Oh, we're getting a little messy here. I keep grabbing that whole hook shank. So afraid I'm gonna break or hurt myself. <laughs> well, like I said, you know, I just really can't see how. I mean, you might be able to automate, perhaps, maybe a a zebra midge or a brassy, not, or you know. Maybe even the San Juan worm, but once you start dealing with with hair and and, uh, and feathers, and then things start you start throwing so much complexity into it. Maybe if it was just a a hundred percent synthetic material, I, I don't know. You'd have to get into the 
the faux bucktails and Exactly, the art would be lost if it was automated. I think the last time I, I spun some deer here, <laughs> a famous one, was my uh, turkey. Yeah, that's not going anywhere. So, I think on that, we're going to whip finish and call that what it is done Let's take a pause for the cause, just to appreciate where we're at with things. Oh, <sighs> so how's everybody doing? Let's check in. Got four or five people watching. <sighs> what a day! We're about halfway through our cup of coffee. We might not have to go make a new batch. We'll just continue on. Tell you what, my fingers are sore. My, on my left hand, from just holding the hair, manipulating it, it's uh, it's pretty tight. Let's see where are we at. We're at. That took an hour. That took the better part of an hour to get that front end or that body tied in and I spent hardly any time on the back half uh, messing around with the uh, the tail this was more an exercise of the uh, spinning of the deer hair that's what I wanted to Coffee time, he will, he will BRB. Gotta run, thanks for the morning tie. Hey, Brian, thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Um, do me a favor, hit that share button. And that big old thumbs up. Appreciate it. Again, uh, later on today, we're going to continue on with the uh, hairline dubbing. Top 20 fly tying patterns. I gotta look down, read my. What do you call it? I don't know. Tell you what, folks, one thing you do find out after watching a few of these live streams is you get what you get. I am who I am. Um, and it is what it is, it's what happens. On a fly tires bench, um, you know I'm not the best, I'm not the greatest, but I'm always willing to share. I'm always willing to learn. So, well, we're gonna continue on. We're gonna jump right back into it. We're gonna experiment. Okay, well, Steve is back, and I'm gonna experiment with my. Uh, well, why am I doing that? It's right here. There we go. 
We're going to experiment with our little razor trimmer doohickey thing. And one thing that I do know about messing around with uh, trimming deer hair is A, you have to be really, really careful because they'll cut you. B, the newer the blade, the better. Got some derbies. I bought us a, a thousand pack of these blades a way while back, and the cutter actually came with a ten pack. I think this is what came with the cutter. Yeah. So this is with the cutter itself, or not the cutter, but the tool, this derby tool. Oh, we got a switcher. Came with a 10 pack and a little. So, I don't know what the difference between the two is going to be, but we're going to work with our 10 pack for now. Let's go ahead and get this open. We almost need a, uh, a razor blade to open it. And I keep an old box nearby to put the old blades in. Here we go. And again, we're going to be oh so careful. Check this link for hand. It's not a link's not going to pop up, not up during the chat. have to you'll have to post that link somewhere because <laughs> I don't think you can do links during live live events I think they just get automatically rejected So, the blade is in the holder, and as you twist it, it adds more of a curve to it. Boy, this makes me nervous. <sighs> All that hard work and... I don't know. I just want to leave it. Here we go, straight down, straight down the back. Well, that was pretty fun. Let's see if we can do that again a little bit more even. Now that we're looking closer. Oh my gosh, this, this is worth it. And we're gonna tighten this up just a little bit more and get us a little bit more of a curve. Oh, this is nice dealing with scissors and junk this whole time. In fact, I'm going to take my little hair clip. We're going to hold that tail down. this little tool. Trying to give us a little bit of a taper.
little bit tighter on the bottom, but we want that to be a little flatter. In fact, what we're going to do is we're going to switch our razor blade from side one already to size two. Or side two. This is my first time using this tool. I don't like it thus far. So we can see by doing our flat bottom, I, I can see where the density lies. You can see how dense it is right there in that kind of inner part of that core. It is coming through on the camera somewhat. going to I suppose I could have took a, took a couple wax at it with the uh, scissors prior to any of this let's get our tail kind of held back again Nothing else. I, my fingers are a lot safer. I'm using the, the brush. Okay. Get into that. I started combing out that Solaris Flex. But we'll get. Maybe we should have just saved that till later. Again, you know, I'm I'm not I'm not very experienced into spinning deer hair or trimming deer hair. It's not something I do very often. That's why we're here to learn and have some fun. Alright, we're gonna keep this we're experimenting here. So this is still on side two. Nice tight radii. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch to side three. We're getting there. I suppose we probably, I don't know. All right, Jeff, I appreciate that. Guitars, the 
finding that helps with ties. What a coinkity, because we play guitars and tie flies. I actually, I don't know if I saved it or not, but I just recently changed out uh, all my strings on all my guitars. We got two, two electrics and three acoustics in the house, and I decided it was about time to do the strings. Because prior to this uh, global pandemic, honestly, I was not tying or not playing guitar much. Ooh, piano too. I do noodle around on the piano. All right. You know, eyes and junk. I don't know if I want to do eyes. Legs, I should have probably done my legs prior. Because how do I do, I guess I could jam a leg in there, but I think I would have wanted to have tied that leg in. So we're not going to do any legs. We're not going to worry about legs. We're not going to worry about eyes. I am going to throw a little bit of... Uh, flex up front. So these will kind of get a decent shape. Maybe go with that. Guitars for vets. Yeah, that's a, a pretty neat outfit. Um, I actually, when I was in the post-traumatic stress disorder intensive program at the St. Cloud VA. It was an inpatient deal and one of the things that I really enjoyed was both the guitar workshop, they called it, which was basically uh, guitars for vets kind of deal and uh, Project Healing Waters. So I was playing guitar, Antine Flies, as part of my recovery, dealing with all this bull snort. Um, I decided to go with the flex, not to flex, but tissue here. Wipe off the bodkin. I'm just trying to get that front end to be just a little bit square. And I think with the flex, it's not going to cook it too hard. We're going to add another little, little splash in front of there. Yeah, and while I was learning how to tie flies, I was relearning how to play guitar. I've been playing guitar since I was 15, 16, uh, like most kids in my neighborhood. Yeah, not a bad hack job at a at spinning deer hair, and making the deer hair popper. You know, it's not my strongest flies, but I wish I had. I bet you I could add that. How sweet! I wish I just had a little ring of hackle right there at that.
But yeah, that's going to be it. that flare just a little bit. All right. Not too bad for a first attempt in quite some time at spinning some deer here. But, all right, what do we got here? Jeff says, uh, both useful groups to have available. Absolutely, it's been huge for depression and anxiety. Also have MS, uh, so that's what keeps your, keeps your hand strength and dexterity. Dexterity is good. You know, it's it's fun to exercise the brain. It's fun to exercise the hands. It's great to exercise the heart and the soul. Um, one thing that I've actually recently started doing not too long ago is uh, messing around with the Rubik's Cube. A Rubik's Cube, if you get a standard Rubik's Cube and learn how to solve it following one of the basic algorithms, that can be a great hand workout as well. And a great mental flex and it's pretty cool to show off to friends and family i love seeing uh well back when we used to go to these bars and restaurants <laughs> a lot of the brew pubs and whatnot would have the game shelf right they have all the different board games and card games for people to play while they're at the brewery and every now and then you come across one that has a rubik's cube sitting there and i just love walking up to it just i'm not i'm not i get it down to maybe three minutes or so if I'm like really quick with it but I don't know I love tying flies I'm glad to do this for you guys and gals um, you know this Monday morning thing it's it's to keep me going this is my motivation if I if I force myself and commit myself to tie flies I know ultimately in the end I'll be a happier healthier me and why not share it with you guys so stay tuned uh later on possibly today depending on the wind it might be a little bit too windy to go out fly fishing i don't know i might just go out and flog the water for an hour or so because apparently that's what i do i'm better at tying flies than i am at using them i can't deny that Oh, that's a nice looking fun popper <laughs> so 
Yeah, Wooly Bugger coming up. Continue on. Uh, or continuation of the. Where is this at? The Hairline Dubbing LLC Fly Tine Kit Top 20 Patterns for the Beginners. Everything you need to tie two flies of 20 different patterns. It's a fun kit. But anyways, we'll get we'll get on with that um, as we get on with our day. So I guess we're gonna leave it at that. Thank you all for tuning in on this Monday morning. What are we calling this? Uh, morning coffee. There we go. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Wish everybody a uh, to stay safe. Stay healthy, happy time, and yeah, sure, you betcha. Tight lines. Peace.